With the iconic Pilot Mountain looking down on them, Ricky Folk and his family are in the midst of something of a pilot project in agriculture. This is the work I like to do. Like all farmers, they still plow the soil to perfection, but they're adding another layer of preparation to the planting process. A sheet of plastic. It's a farming technique called plasticulture, and here in Stokes County, the folks are pioneers when it comes to the practice of plastic in the fields. We were looking at the tobacco picture and seeing that uh, we didn't know what the future was holding for it, and we just took off with it and run with it. The folks rolled out the new approach to farming four years ago. They started small with just half an acre, but now they're up to 32, all of them used to grow produce. Cantaloupe, watermelon, uh, acorn squash, spaghetti squash, uh, butternut squash, uh, slicer cucumbers, uh, green beans. Once the plastic is securely in place on top of each row, the folks cut round holes in it, leaving just enough space for a plant to grow and get sunlight, but nothing else. You don't have the weed control problem issues like you do in a lot of situations, like on bare ground. Drip irrigation under the plastic waters the plants and applies fertilizer, and the plastic keeps it all in the ground instead of evaporating. If we had had uh, been watering overhead with our irrigation, uh, we would have lost the last two years. It's just a big savings all the way around. We don't waste water. We utilize the water that's here, even in a shortage. It's helping with the environment, using less chemicals. Not to mention the ability to grow more crops on fewer acres and other potential savings when you factor in rising fuel costs. And the positives from plastic don't end there. Uh, you're looking at your yields being the two to three times more. And agriculture observers say that's what's made plasticulture promising. Many of the new growers it's attracting have a common background. There is a trend, particularly with uh, to tobacco growers. They're looking for other things to grow. It's quite a difference. For Ricky's father-in-law, Thomas Gordon, who owns much of the land and helps in the farming, the transition from tobacco ends a centuries-old tradition. The farm has been in the family since 1792, and I assume that they have grown tobacco every year. I know they have ever since I can remember when I was four or five years old. But with the end of government price supports for tobacco four years ago, there's not as much of a guarantee anymore. Add in tobacco farming's rising fuel and fertilizer costs, and growing produce becomes much more attractive. It cuts down on the biggest thing is on our labor, and that's money in my pocket. You travel over your land less. Uh, it saves fuel. We're clearing a third or more uh, money than what we were on tobacco. The produce market is being propelled by a surge in popularity among consumers. People want to buy more local, and by buying more local, they're, they, they're knowing their, uh, their local farmer. They have a relationship with him. They know where he's at. They know what kind of produce he's growing. And so they feel more confident instead of buying it from afar off and bringing it in. It's a good demand out there, as long as top quality. Like Ricky Falk, Wayne Flippin is also making the switch from tobacco to produce, but leaving the golden leaves behind hasn't been easy. You never know, have done it before, and uh, everything's new to you, and uh, the things come up you haven't never seen before. Even still, some of the new experiences can be a positive change from tobacco. My family's got all excited about produce, and they've all enjoyed it and uh, growing it. The produce growers say growing produce instead of tobacco has helped them cut costs, but it's also led them to a major increase in another part of their operations. It's brought the family together uh, almost double compared to with the tobacco. I'm Katie. They do have hired help during the busy seasons, but for the most part, the folks are a family farm. Ricky and his wife Beth run the operation, and daughters Hannah, Katie, and Julie are laying plastic, picking produce, and tending to the fields almost every day. I run the washer out, and I control the controls, and I grade the number ones and put some in the bins and make sure that everything's running smoothly. I take the boxes, I make them, and then I take them to them to put the cucumbers in, then I haul them up, put them on the pallet to make sure all that's going good. And like every good business, human resources issues do come up from time to time. I've had Daddy fire me and rehire me within an hour before. Yeah, we, we won't go there with that story. <laughs> Also under employ at Triple F Farms and Produce are the tractor drivers, Ricky's father Charles, his father-in-law Thomas, and daughter Katie's boyfriend Patrick. Come on, puppy. 
Even the family dog Luke has a role here. He's in product testing and waste management. He'll sit down in the shop and eat them cucumbers. The folks sell most of their produce to a grocery store distributor, but they also sell some directly to customers. That's where Ricky's mom, Brenda, comes in. The watermelon and cantaloupe has been a, a, a big thing. While her family's out in the fields, Brenda's collecting some of what they pick and putting it in boxes and baskets at the family produce stand. It's been very exciting because we've been together and, and you know when you get up in the morning you're, you're going to go back and be together again. Had the family not pulled together and supported us in this, it would have been the most scariest transaction we've ever had. But everybody was 100% supportive, 100% behind us. And in Ricky's mind, if you can boost your family time by 100% and push up profits by a third at the same time, then produce is prosperous in more ways than he'd ever imagined.